With the copied surfaces created and the solid material removed, I'm now ready to start creating the wrapped ivy. The first step is to show the offset cylindrical surface. I'll be wrapping an existing sketch called Large Vine onto this surface, so I'll show that as well. The sketch consists of a series of free-form splines and has been created in advance in the interest of time. Note that the wrap feature can only wrap onto cylindrical or conical faces. In addition, the sketch must be on a plane that's tangent to the target face or parallel to a plane which is tangent to the target face. To help visualize the wrapping process, I'll also hide all of the solid bodies. I'll initiate the wrap feature from the Insert, Features, Wrap menu. and select the large vine sketch when prompted. The face to wrap onto will be the offset surface. The preview shows how the face would look if flattened, and also how the sketch looks when wrapped. Notice the scribe option is the only option available when wrapping onto a surface body. The emboss and deboss options add and remove material respectively when wrapping is done onto the face of a solid body. Scribe can be used when wrapping onto either a solid or surface, and essentially creates a split line on the face. I'll click OK to complete the wrap. To isolate the vine face, I'll use the Delete Face feature with the Delete option to remove the part of the face outside the scribed edges. I'll hide the vine sketch and continue with the small vine. Because the two sections of the vine require different heights to give the illusion depth, I'm creating them as separate wrap features. This is where the second copied face, the one created using the Move Copy feature, will be used. I'll repeat the same procedure to create the surface for the small vine. I'll show Move Copy Surface Body, wrap the small vine sketch onto the surface body, and use Delete Face to get rid of the unwanted portion of the surface. With the ivy shapes now captured as surfaces, I can now convert them into solids using the Thicken feature. I'll launch the Thicken feature and thicken the large vine surface using the mid-plane option and a thickness of 0.125 inches. The mid-plane thicken is not like a mid-plane extrude. Extrude evenly splits the distance in two directions, but thicken uses the value entered for each direction, effectively doubling the dimension. Now I won't use the merge option with this feature. This is because I'm planning to create a pattern of bodies around the part. The same will hold true for the small vine feature. The small vine is thickened only in a single direction, away from the center of the base, by 0.17 inches. This creates the two-level geometry that gives the look of one vine coming in front of the other. To enable the bodies to merge properly, I'll use the Move Face tool to move the flat end face of the small vine into the large vine. Move Face is found at Insert, Face, Move. I'll use the Offset option with a value of 0.05 inches. This creates the overlap I was looking for.